Proceed. Assembly Bill 464 by Assemblymember Mullen, an act relating to taxation. Senator Hill. Thank you, Madam President. And members, this bill is about local control and flexibility. It gives local voters the ability to raise revenue to fund important public services, including transportation, public safety, and libraries. To do this, AB 464 lifts the cap on district taxes from 2 to 3 percent. Any local tax increase would require voter approval, a majority vote for general purpose taxes, and a two-thirds vote for any taxes that would go for special purposes. This bill is crucial because if just one city within a county reaches the cap, then the entire county is precluded from raising any additional district taxes, hindering key transportation projects or any attempts to enhance public safety. As a result, a flurry of legislation has been signed into law creating individual cap extensions across the state. AB 464 reduces the need for this one-off legislation by lifting the cap statewide. Please join me in granting voters the ability to raise sufficient revenue to fund public services in California. I respectfully ask for an aye vote, members. Thank you, Senator Hill. Is there any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. aye. Anderson? Bates? No. no. Bell? Berryhill? No. no. Block? Aye. aye. Canella? De Leon? Aye. aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? Galjoni? Glazer? No. no. Hall? Hancock? Aye. aye. Hernandez? Aye. aye. Hertzberg? Hill? Aye. Aye. Hueso? Huff? No. no. Jackson? Aye. Aye. Lada? Leno? Aye. Aye. Hall? Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Leva? Aye. Aye. Lou? Aye. Aye. McGuire? Aye. Mendoza? Aye. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Aye. Monning? Aye. Aye. Morlock? No. no. Morell? No. Wynn? No. Nielsen? No. no. Pan? Aye. Aye. Pavley? Roth? No. no. Runner? Stone? No. no. Vidak? No. no. Wykowski? Aye. Aye. Wolk? Wolk? Aye. 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 No. Colleagues, let's go through this one more time. Please call the absent members. Bell? Aye. Aye. Canella? Gaines? No. no. Galjoni? Hertzberg, Hueso, Lada, Pavley, Runner, no. Please call the absent members one more time, please. Canella, Galjoni, Hertzberg, Hueso, Lada, Pavley. Pavley, aye. One more time, please. Canella, Galjoni, Hertzberg, Hueso, Lada. Senator Hill moves a call. All right, uh, moving back to file item, or I should say forward to file item 49. File item 49, colleagues. Uh, Assembly Member Lackey, Senator Runner, are you prepared to take up file item 49? Pass on file? Pass on file. File item 51, 51 by Assemblymember Bonilla, Senator Block, do you wish to take up that item? Pass on file. File item 54, 54, Senator Glazer, do you wish to take that up? Pass on file. File item 58, file item 58 by Senator Leva, do you wish to take up that item? Mr. Secretary, please read file item 58, colleagues. Assembly Bill 359 by Assemblymember Gonzalez, an act relating to grocery workers. Senator Leva. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, members. It is a real pleasure for me to be here today and present AB 359 to you, the grocery worker retention bill authored by Assemblywoman Gonzalez. As a lifelong advocate for workers, particularly those workers in grocery stores up and down our great state, I am a firm believer that we must help build up our working class and do our part to strengthen California families and California communities. As you may know, I have spent the vast majority of my professional life 
either working in a grocery store or representing grocery store workers. Mm -hmm. Despite our differences, we can fully understand and appreciate that California workers are a critical part of the economic engine that drives our economy. AB 359 is a logical step to help both grocery store owners and employees during a change of ownership. AB 359 will ensure that if and when a grocery store of 15,000 square feet or larger is sold to another grocer, the workers in the original store will be retained for 90 days with the new store employer. This bill will give grocery workers the ability to do one of two things. One, to earn the opportunity to be hired after 90 days, or two, use those 90 days to find a new job to support themselves and their families. AB 359 will prohibit without cause termination of grocery store workers during a 90-day transition period after a grocery store undergoes change of ownership. This bill follows the lead of cities like Gardena, Santa Monica, and San Francisco, which have all already adopted grocery worker retention ordinances. But let me quickly tell you what this bill does not do. AB 359 will not change the ability of multinational grocery chains from reorganizing and laying off workers. It will not limit the ability of grocery chains to buy and sell stores for profit. AB 359 simply creates a common sense protection for grocery workers during this difficult time of transition and offers these new stores an experienced and ready to go workforce that will continue to serve their customers during the initial three months after the sale. Members, good grocery store jobs are an important part of the economic fabric in the communities that we all represent. These are the hardworking people who greet us when we run into the store to grab a gallon of milk or do our shopping for our families. AB 359 simply offers them a fighting chance to continue working for a short period of time when their store is bought by another chain. Then, after the 90 days are up, I am confident that most grocery stores will value the importance of having an experienced workforce and will hopefully choose to retain them on a permanent basis. Members, I respectfully request your I vote. Thank, thank you, Senator Leva, Senator Leno, followed by Senator Hall, and followed then by Senator Stone. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, whenever we take a new step, there are often concerns that how this is going to play out isn't as the proponent suggests, and that, to use an old phrase, sky will fall and civilization as we know will end. But San Francisco is among a handful of cities across the state which have implemented local ordinances, which is very similar to one that's before us today. San Francisco did this in 2006. Since then, the city has created 35,000 new grocery jobs. In addition, we've also opened five new grocery stores, including two Whole Foods stores and also two Trader Joe's. So from our experience, it is not only possible, but it is fact that we can retain grocery workers' jobs and expand the grocery industry simultaneously. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Leno. Senator Hall. Yes, um, uh, Madam President and members, I rise in support of AB 359. For over 35 years, my father was a proud member of UFCW uh, Local 770. Um, he was, a, he was very proud to wear the uniform and serve the customers in his community. Uh, being employed as a grocery worker allowed my father to provide uh, for his family and give back to his community, quite frankly. Uh, as we know, this is not a, a unique story in California. There are other cities throughout the state who are uh, doing this. Uh, that is why today I'm standing up for those who work and remain part of the community and remain part of the fabric of grocery work in Los Angeles County and throughout California. Uh, the bill uh, will provide a common sense approach to protecting grocery workers from termination when a new owner purchases the business for 90 days. I think this is a common sense bill. It's good for our workers and it's good for California. Uh, and so I stand in support of uh, AB 359. That's my colleagues to do as well. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Senator Hall. Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I respectfully rise to oppose AB 359. This bill proposes a drastic revision in employment law where we have a serious departure from California's at-will employment status. AB 359 unreasonably proposes to eliminate one side of the at-will relationship at the expense of the other when a grocery establishment is purchased. It would make an employment contract in the grocery business completely one-sided. This bill is nothing more than an extension of the arm of government into the inner workings of private companies and their relationships with their employees. It represents government micromanaging private companies and the details of what's supposed to be a private transaction. California is already ranked dead last in most categories when it comes to business friendliness, rules, and regulations. There are many reasons why a grocery store is either closing or is selling. It's because they may be failing and they want a whole new philosophy on how to run their businesses. There's a possibility that a new owner could just say no and open it in an alternative shopping center where we see many, many vacancies in many of our counties to the detriment of the many businesses that depend on that grocery store as an anchor tenant. So this can have a, a negative effect on many other businesses that depend on those anchors for, for traffic. You know, many of us, uh, we get elected here and we have term limits. We like to choose our own staff. If you're elected here, you should not, and you do not in most cases, accept your predecessor's staff because you may have a different philosophy than your other staff, assuming the partisanship remains the same. Why should we hold a different standard to those in the private sector as we do with that will employees here in the Senate? For these reasons, let business be business. Grocery stores can't operate without people. Let a new business owner with a different philosophy have the opportunity to choose the employees that they believe can carry on the successful traditions of giving good food and service, service to the residents of the state of California. For those reasons, I urge a no vote on AB 359. Thank you, Senator Stone. Any further debate or discussion? Further debate or discussion? Seeing none, Senator Leva, you may close. Thank you, Madam President. To the great senator from Temecula, I would simply say that the philosophy that the new owner chooses to employ, they absolutely can do this. This bill would not require them to do anything different with their philosophy. They may do whatever they choose to do. And the at-will clause is for 90 days. I personally would like to see it much longer. 90 days, three months. It's not a very long time. And for those of us who shop in a grocery store weekly, daily, monthly, those are our friends and our neighbors. It's a little different from the staff that we hire here in the Capitol who doesn't work with the public every day. Most of you probably know your checker. You probably know the person who decorates the cake for your son or daughter's birthday. Those people are very important and they are the fabric of our community. So members, I would ask you for your I vote today. Let's give our friends and family who work in the grocery store business a fighting chance when their store is sold. Thank you, I urge an I vote. All debate having ceased, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Yes. No. Bates? No. no. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? No. no. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? De Leon? Aye. Aye. Fuller? Aye. No. Gaines? No. no. Galgioni? Glazer? No. Hall? Aye. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Hernandez? Aye, Hertzberg. Hill. Hueso. Aye. Aye, Huff. No, Jackson. Aye, Lada. Aye, Leno. Aye, Leva. Aye, Lou. Aye, McGuire. Aye, Mendoza. Aye, Mitchell. Aye, Monning. Aye, Morlock. No, Morell. No, Wynn. No, Nielsen. No, Pan. Aye, Pavley. I Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, I Wolk. Roth, I. Please call the absent members. Canella, Galgioni, Hertzberg, Galgioni, no. Hill, 
Runner, Hill I. Runner, Stone, no, Vidak, no, Wolk. Ayes 22, noes 14, the measure passes. Colleagues, uh, by way of introduction, we have a few of our esteemed former colleagues and others here with us today. Could we give a nice round of applause to our former colleague, Senator Lou Correa, also on the High Speed Rail Commission. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> former Assembly Member Sharon Quirk Silva is with us today wearing bright red. And we also have here today Santa Ana City Councilwoman Michelle Martinez, who is the president of the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials, Naleo. Welcome, welcome. Senator, Senator Lara. Madam President, I also just want to congratulate City uh, Santa Ana Councilwoman Michelle Martinez, who be also becomes the first California woman to head uh, Naleo, the national organization. Thank you. Thank you. Senator De Leon. Under motions and resolutions. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Colleagues, today I rise to recognize three journalists who have made outstanding contributions to the Capitol Press Corps over the years. These journalists have covered the global impacts of state house policies and have kept our large and diverse state very well informed. I'd like to introduce Marianne uh, Russ, Richard Sharp, and Jenny O'Mara, who have extensive background reporting here in Sacramento. They were here during the very dark days when budget negotiations ran on and through the summer, through the energy crisis and through the years of economic hardship. And it must seem like a lot of fun and gains for them now. Now they have new ways to taunt us like Twitter and that the capital is run by two corgis now, downs below. But in all seriousness, I want to introduce our guests and thank them for their contributions and wish them the very best moving forward. Marianne has been working as a broadcast journalist for more than 15 years, most of which have been involved in public radio. She was most recently the managing editor for the news department for Capitol Public Radio, where she pre previously served as the Capitol Bureau Chief for six years. Marianne has received numerous awards for her work, most prominently an Edward R. Murrow Award and two California Journalism Awards. Janie O'Mara has been a reporter for Capitol Radio for over nine years. In her time here in Sacramento, Ginny reported on the state energy crisis, as well as the ill-fated truck crashing into the state capitol building just underneath us. And our sergeant of arms. Oh, I'm sorry. And Ms. Fran Pauly was here at the time when it happened. Thank you very much. That, 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 thank you. <laughs> thank you. So both Jenny and Marianne worked as an award-winning special series in which they took the mystery out of the bond spending that, were taking, that was uh, taking place back in the spring of 2006. Now, Richard Sharp began his career as an intern with KCRA Sacramento back in 1997, and from there has moved around the country working as an anchor and reporter in several states, including Utah, Mississippi, Texas, as well as Ohio. Colleagues, uh, please join me and wishing these wonderful reports from Capitol Public Radio a very uh, f fond farewell and wish them the very best of luck in their near future. With that, we welcome these colleagues and we give them these recognitions. Thank you, Senator DeLeon, and thank you for your service. Senator Huff. Senator Huff. Yes, Madam President, members, on this same subject, uh, before we do all the grip and grins, I'd like to note that both Jenny and Marianne are taking their talents elsewhere after more than a decade is heard, but they started the KFBK News Talk Radio 1530 and then went to Capitol Public Radio. Both are veterans of those late night budget hearings. In fact, if you talk to Marianne privately, she will tell you that uh, she's a fan of former pro tem Steinberg and his signature budget line, bring your toothbrush. 
In both cases, members, it's a homecoming for the reporters. Both Marianne and Jenny are not native to Sacramento. In fact, if I'm lucky, Jenny's next stop will be at one of my home stations and that of many of you in here, KNX News Radio in LA. That's where she got her start after graduating from Cal State Northridge. Marianne didn't need him from California. She's a transplant from the Midwest. In her case, she's heading back home to Kansas City, Missouri, where her husband Richard Sharp will anchor a local television news broadcast. Both Jenny and Marianne are state capital veterans members, and uh, we wish them the very best. Thank you, Senator Off, and thank you again for your wonderful work here in Sacramento. And without objection, a photographer will be allowed on the floor. Back to the uh, assembly third reading file. Colleagues, uh, we are at file item 59 by Assemblymember Chavez. Senator Bates, do you wish to take up this item? File on item 59. Mr. Secretary, please read. Colleagues, we are at file item 59. Assembly Bill 1451 by Assemblymember Chavez, an act relating to workers' compensation. Senator Bates. Thank you, Madam President. Members, currently certain public safety officers who are unable to work due to an illness or injury that arises out of and in the course of their employment are entitled to an enhanced temporary disability benefit that allows them to take a leave of absence for up to one year without the loss of salary. Last session, SB 527 made this benefit available to lifeguards that are employed by the City of San Diego on a full-time year-round basis. AB 1451 extends this benefit to lifeguards that are employed by the City of Oceanside. I'd like you to know that's five lifeguards. The Oceanside Lifeguard Patrol beaches right up the coast from the City of San Diego have virtually indistinguishable responsibilities from the lifeguards in the City of San Diego and have all the powers of a police officer to enforce the law on Oceanside's beaches. AB 1451 is sponsored by the Ocean Oceanside Peace Officers Association, is supported by the mayor and the city of Oceanside. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Bates. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Anderson? Bates? Aye. I Bell? I Berryhill? Block? I Canella? I. De Leon, I. Fuller, Gaines, Calgioni, Glazer, Hall, I. Hancock, I. Hernandez, I. Hertzberg, I. Hill, I. Wisso, I. Huff, I. Jackson, I. I. Lada, I. Leno, I. Leva, I. Lou, I. McGuire, I. Mendoza, I. Mitchell, I. Monning. I. Morlock? No. no. Morrell? Wynn? Aye. I. Nielsen? Pan? Aye. I. Pavley? Aye. I. Roth? Runner? Aye. I. Stone? Aye. I. Vidak? Aye. I. Wykowski? I. Wolk? Wolk, I. Please call the absent members. Allen? Aye. I. Anderson? No. No. Berryhill? No. Fuller? Gaines? No. Galgioni? I. Glazer? I. Morell? No. Nielsen? No. Roth? I. I's 33, no 6. The measure passes. Moving along to file item 71. File item 71 by Assemblymember Dodd. Senator Hertzberg, are you pass on file? I'm sorry. Going back, my apologies. File item 67. 67, Senator. Block wishes to take that up. Mr. Secretary, please read file item 67, colleagues. 
Assembly Bill 1517 by the Committee on Banking and Finance and Act Relating to Business. Senator Block. Thank you, Madam President. AB 1517 is a non-controversial Assembly Banking and Finance Committee bill. It addresses a number of technical deficiencies in existing law that will allow the Department of Business Oversight to better administer the laws under its jurisdiction. Most important provision of the bill corrects a drafting error that may have inadvertently raised the burden of proof for bringing charges of security fraud under California law. AB 1517 passed Senate Banking and Financial Institutions Committee unanimously and has received no no votes throughout the process. I ask your I vote. Is there any debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substitute? We haven't established our quorum yet, so unanimous roll call. We have our quorum, no unanimous roll call, so we will ask Mr. Secretary to call the roll. Allen? Anderson? Bates? I. Bell? I. Berryhill? Block? I. Canella? I. De Leon? Fuller? I. Gaines? I. Galgioni? I. Glazer? I. Hall? I. Hancock? I. Hernandez? I. Hertzberg? I. Hill? I. Wesso? I. Huff? I. Jackson? I. Lada? I. Leno? I. Leva? I. Lou? I. McGuire? I. Mendoza? I. Mitchell? I. Monning? I. Morlock? I. Morrell? I. Wynn? I. Nielsen? Pan? I. Pavley? I. Roth? I. Runner? I. Stone? I. Vidak? Wykowski? I. Wolk? Walk I, Anderson please, I. Please call the absent members. Allen, I, Berryhill, De Leon, Nilsson, I, Vidak, I. Please. De Leon I. Please call the absent members. Berryhill, I. Ayes 40, no zero. That measure passes. File item 72. File item 72 by Assemblymember Nazarian, Senator Leva, do you wish to take up that item? Pass on file. File item 81. File item 81 is uh, a Senator Lara, do you wish to take up Assemblymember uh, Garcia's file item 81? Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 952 by Assemblymember Christina Garcia, an act relating to local government. Senator Laura. Thank you, Madam President. Members, AB 952 would provide that if a city council member vacates his or her seat during the first half of their term and at least 130 days prior to the next election, the uh, interim appointee would hold a seat until the next general election. The need for the bill arose from appointees serving in vacated seats for years without being elected by the voters. Well, this appointment, these appointments are made out of necessity. Voters are left without uh, the equation, left out of the equation. AB 952 would create an opportunity for local governments to hold an election, essentially allowing voters to participate in the political process. The bill has enjoyed bipartisan support and has no opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye votes. Any debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substituting a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ice 39, no zero. The measure passes. File item 83, Senator Anderson, do you wish to take up this item? Pass on file. File item 88, Assembly, uh, excuse me, Senator Wykowski, Assembly Member Holden's measure. Mr. Secretary, please read file item 88, colleagues. Assembly Bill 265 by Assembly Member Holden, an act relating to consumer protection. Senator Wykowski. Thank you, Madam uh, President. This bill is a consumer protection measure requiring buy here, pay here dealerships to wait five to 10 days after the payment's due date before remotely disabling a vehicle. As many of my colleagues know, buy here, pay here auto dealers are those that keep over 90% of their auto loans in-house, opposed to traditional dealerships uh, who sell the majority of their loans within days. Keeping the loans allows buy here, pay here dealers to avoid most lending guidelines, opening up vehicle sales to people with poor credit, which is a service that they provide. However, due to the poor credit, some of these buyers remain on a very short lease. 
leash. Now, the current law requires a 48-hour waiting period. This would extend that to five to uh, uh, 10 days, um, allowing people who are struggling to make other family obligations uh, not lose their car simply because they're late. Extending this timeline provides working families the extra flexibility they need to make the payments and stay in their vehicles. I would urge an I vote. Thank you, Senator Wojcicki. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Is there any objection to substituting a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 38, no zero. That measure passes. I'm ready when you are. Okay. We're gonna go back, colleagues, to file item 80. Three, file item 83 by Assemblymember Jones, Senator Anderson. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1146 by Assemblymember Jones, an act relating to recreational safety. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Madam President. Assembly Bill 1146 addresses the current limitations on our city and county state parks by broadening the definition of devices allowed on these parks to include all-wheeled, non-motorized non devices such as scooters, bicycles, inline skates, roller skates, and non-motorized wheeled uh, uh, wheelchairs. I urge an I vote. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion on file item 83? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substitute? There is, I'm sorry. I, all right, too much activity going on over there. Senator Stone, my apologies. Debate or discussion? Thank you, Madam President. I'll be brief. Uh, be brief. Uh, AB 1146, I stand in support. Uh, the city of Temecula, about 20 years ago, uh, put uh, together one of the very first uh, skate parks in the state of California after touring uh, many uh, that exist that had some very safe elements, had some very unsafe elements. Um, I want you to I'd like the Senate to know that the skateboard park has been a wonderful attraction for, for our kids, giving them something very positive to do. We require uh, safety equipment, we require uh, knee braces, uh, elbow braces, helmets, and uh, we have operated without uh, litigation uh, because we made it very clear if we had litigation, this park would close. So this is a, a particularly good form of immunity for local jurisdictions that want to provide positive activities for their kids, skateboarding being one of them. Hopefully, they'll wear the safety equipment and have the same experience that our citizens have had in our city. Strongly urge an I vote. Thank you, Senator Stone. Any other debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substituting a unanimous roll call? Unless you'd like to close, Senator Anderson. All right. Any objection to a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes. 38, no's zero, that measure passes. We are gonna go back to file item 73, and then colleagues, we're gonna go through the file rather than be bouncing around. If we miss your item and you would like to bring it up, it's been called, but you weren't at your desk, we'll do that at the end. We're gonna go through in chronological order henceforth, but we're gonna go back for Senator Laura to file item 73. Mr. Secretary, please read.